Jafar's Deathly Dagger upgrade is absolutely insane when you decide to combine it with other non-lethal damaging skills. If you decide to invest in the Angel of Death, then every upgraded version of Deathly Dagger comes with the following effect. After combat, if unit attacked, deals 10 damage to both the target and any foes within 2 spaces of the target, and also inflicts a minus 7 defense and resistance debuff through their next actions. This 10 after combat damage is non-lethal, meaning the enemy will only ever drop to as low as 1 HP. If you decide to choose the special variant of Deathly Dagger, then you also get an additional effect. If Jafar initiates battle, then any foe using magic cannot counterattack. In this case, magic is defined as any tome user, so it does not work against Dragonstone users or staff users, even though they deal magical damage. So the upgraded Deathly Dagger is already pretty sweet. 10 AoE damage and a fire sweep type effect against mages. However, the true terror of this weapon is when you combine it with Poison Strike and Savage Blow, which also deal non-lethal damage after combat. With Poison Strike 3, Jafar would deal 20 extra damage to his target, and with a Savage Blow 3 skill in the C slot and Sacred Seal slot, he would deal a ridiculous 24 extra damage to foes within 2 spaces of the target. This type of damage is not affected by enemy defense or resistance in any way, which makes it incredibly useful against tanky units. Let's go over what a super simple build can look like with these two skills. To be quite honest, Jafar's statline falls prey to just not being min-maxed enough. Where other daggers sacrifice either defense or resistance for attack and speed, Jafar has too many points in both defense and resistance and they aren't even at what I would consider above average. Despite Jafar's terrible base attack and okay speed, he does come with life and death 3 by default. Unfortunately, he suffers from the balancing idea that life and death would make up for his low base stats, and this way of balancing a unit got completely tossed out the window when skill inheritance came out. Fortunately, Deathly Dagger also gets an extra plus 3 might when upgraded, so Jafar was set at a decent 45 attack and 38 speed after considering Life and Death 3. We can definitely work with this. Any assist skill will do and you can use his default Glimmer or swap it out for Moonbow or Luna if you want. B skill will be Poison Strike 3 and his C skill will be Savage Blow 3. You will hopefully want to upgrade the Savage Blow Sacred Seal to Tier 3 as well, but I think Tier 2 will suffice and that's what I'm using currently. This same build can also work for Pain Plus staff users, but keep in mind that Deathly Dagger offers a little more than just the extra non-lethal damage. The AoE debuff is great, and being physical damage means Jafar will be able to prey on all those low defense swishing mages. This build is all about getting the extra chip damage in, and you don't need to invest super heavily to make it happen. Now let's discuss the merits and consequences the 24 points of aerial effect damage has when you use Jafar. First off, if an enemy has 46 HP and gets hit by the splash damage from Deathly Dagger and Double Savage Blow 3 skills, and they will be guaranteed to be knocked below 50% HP. Now 47 HP enemies will also get knocked below 50% HP technically, but I'm not entirely sure how the game uses rounding in this situation, since half of 47 is 23.5, and we can't just have 0.5 HP. It should work, but 46 is guaranteed, and enemies with 48 or more HP will not be knocked below 50% HP. Why is this important? Many skills in the game have health requirements tied to them, and Jafar will be able to knock many units out of these HP thresholds thanks to that incredible 24 points of splash damage. There are many skills that will be outright negated if the enemies have 46 HP or less and get hit. Breaker skills, Quick Repose, Vengeful Fighter, Worry Fighter, Guard, Obstruct, and Chilling Seal will all be useless once that unit is tagged by Jafar. Quick Repose and Guard only work till an enemy has less than 70 and 80% HP, so these will be really easy to break. Many of these skills are quite useful, so being able to deactivate them before they even get into a fight is really nice. However, there are also skills that activate once a unit dips below a certain HP threshold, and Jafar can trigger these skills to your team's disadvantage if you're not careful. The skills that can be triggered on low HP include Vantage, Desperation, Escape, Route, Wings of Mercy, Rash Assault, Wrath, Defiant skills, and the new Brazen skills. So being able to dish out 24 points of damage to a unit is great and all, but many of these skills are very dangerous, especially in Arena. Wings of Mercy in particular can be really nasty. Let's say you take out one enemy and tag the rest with splash damage. You end your turn, and now this opens up the possibility of Wings of Mercy units or dancers being able to sweep your team. What if you accidentally trigger the Desperation and Brash Assault combo, and now good old Alphonse is taking out multiple units because he's got a couple of dancer friends. I'm not saying this kills Jafar and his splash damage build, but it can have some unintended consequences if you aren't keeping track of certain skills. We'll discuss what you can do to mitigate these consequences in a little bit. Lastly, we have a couple skills that I wouldn't say get negated or activated, but are affected depending on how a battle goes. These are boost skills, panic ploy, and infantry pulse, 
All of these require units to have higher HP than the enemy or allies to activate, and because of Jafar's splash damage, you can mess up units who use these skills. Infantry Pulse is an interesting case because it activates on turn 1. However, I found a scenario where you can deactivate it before it goes off. In this example, Dorcas has Infantry Pulse 3 and it should work on Mia, Loot, and Joshua if they keep themselves at full HP. However, if we can lower Dorcas' health before turn 1 of the enemy phase, then we can stop Infantry Pulse from working. You will see that Mia and Loot do not get their special cooldown uh, lowered because Dorcas now has lower HP than them at the start of turn 1. It comes down to map and unit placement to determine if you can hit an enemy on turn 1, but it is something fun to keep in mind, and is technically a way to counter Infantry Pulse as a skill. So to help Jafar out, we can provide him with some helpful teammates who can amplify Deadly Dagger's effectiveness as well as prevent a few of those issues we mentioned before. Dancers are a very good choice to use because you can basically double the amount of splash damage you deal. Jafar can take 40 HP from his target, and now 48 HP from surrounding enemies, which will put most units at 1 HP. A Dancer will also allow Jafar to easily clean up his initial target or attack another enemy who is now also affected by the Defense and Resistance debuff. This build is fun in Arena, but Arena teams commonly use a lot of those skills I mentioned that will be activated if Jafar tags them with splash damage. Vantage and Desperation are very strong, but you can then counter this with a Hardy Bearing Sacred Seal user. With this seal, you can initiate on units who are in vantage range, and you can prevent Desperation from taking effect. The user should have high enough attack that they can clean up Jafar's weakened targets, and unless those these are 50 HP or higher units, then you shouldn't have too much of a problem with that. Another great teammate if you have one is a distant counter advantage user. The idea is that Jafar will make his move to hit the enemy team with his 24 splash damage, and your own vantage user will come in to reposition or swap places with Jafar. Now that the enemy is on low health, your unit should be able to clean up the rest of the team. If their HP gets lower, then they just use their own vantage skill, and you can watch the enemy AI suicide units into them. Now I think a distant counter unit is best for this because you will be able to use vantage on all threats. You do need to be careful of fire sweep type weapons or similar effects that prevent your own unit's counter attack however. You also want to ensure that this unit can KO reliably, because otherwise Wings of Mercy dancers may let a unit target someone else on the team instead. If you have any other suggestions for synergistic teammates, then please do comment down below, I'd love to hear about them. My thoughts on this weapon upgrade is that it is probably better suited for PvE content, but it can definitely still work well in Arena. In PvE maps, you can, pre you can prepare ahead of time because the maps are already set. On Inferno difficulty Grand Hero Battles, or Bound Hero Battles, the ability to chip away tons of free HP is pretty strong and a lot of times those maps have choke points where the enemies group up. However, this splash damage build can struggle depending on enemy placement and map layout. A spread out enemy team makes it harder to effectively use Deadly Dagger, and Jafar doesn't exactly have the greatest killing power on his own. Just by messing around in Arena, I can, I can say this build is hilariously fun. If you aren't gunning for super high tier 20 scores, then you can probably slaughter teams with Jafar and a Dancer. The problem in high tier Arena becomes that there are still way too many skills that can benefit because Jafar lowered a unit's health into the right threshold. He's also not a one round killing machine himself, and that is a problem. Even if he chips away at a whole team, if they are running Reinhardt, Bravelin, or any desperation unit, then a Wings of Mercy Dancer can, co can completely allow them to take out multiple enemies on the next turn. There is a lot of fun to be had with this build, you just need to be aware of unintended effects. Overall, the upgraded Deathly Dagger makes Jafar much more fun to use. I know he is a popular assassin from the series, and everyone was pretty let down by how weak he felt. With this build, he can carve out his own niche in the dagger class, and can cause a lot of chaos with his huge amount of splash damage. Jafar may not be the best uh, combat dagger unit out there, but his legendary weapon net does now set him apart. Tell me what you guys think of upgraded Deathly Dagger, and if you have any experience with it on your own Jafars. It's a pretty cool weapon now, and I'm pretty happy with the buff it's been given. That's it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next Fire Emblem Heroes Guide.